Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm actually stuck somewhere which is not at home. So I do not have access to all of my gear. And because of that, I'm bringing around a really essential kit that I feel might be useful in the case of beginner photographers. So most of these items are going to be catered towards the beginner photographer. However, if you are a more professional photographer or a more advanced photographer, then you might want to stick around as well because you never know, some of these items you might not be carrying with you, but I might be showing them to you and you might feel like, oh, this is quite useful. Without further ado, let's get into the actual first part of the video, which is... Okay, so the first item on my list is going to be a camera body. So you can use multiple camera bodies. The one that I am bringing today is uh, X-T3. However, other camera bodies would work as well, as long as it is a interchangeable lens camera. So that would be my main recommendation, which is a camera that can change its lenses. I would recommend that over point and shoots. However, if your budget does allow it, a lot of point and shoots these days are quite good as well. A good camera is going to be the heart of your whole kit. Everything is going to probably move around the camera and the lens. So I would suggest getting a good one. Uh, a good one doesn't necessarily mean an expensive one. It could mean a cheaper one that is older, so it would perform pretty good considering the circumstances, but it would be more budget friendly. So in the terms of a beginner, your goal with this first camera would be to learn how to use a camera. You would go through the basic theories of photography as well as the certain rules that might exist in photographies and when to even break those rules sometimes. And you would want to learn how to take good photos before investing in a more expensive camera body. So the first piece that I feel like every beginner should have is the camera body itself. The second thing that every beginner should have for their photography is a good prime lens. Or maybe not a good one, but at least a prime lens. So my personal recommendation is that you should probably skip your kit lens and just get a prime lens. And I'm going to go through why I'm saying that right now and my reasons behind it. So a prime lens is a lens with a fixed focal length. That means that it cannot zoom but usually prime lenses are built better and they also open up to a wider aperture. So why a prime lens? My reasoning behind all of this is that um, it's a locked focal length, which means that you cannot zoom, as I said before. So this will allow you to, or more like force you, to think more about your composition. You cannot stand in a spot and simply just zoom the lens in and out to get your shot. You have to actually physically move yourself. So this will force you to be very conscious about your composition. You can't just take simple shots of here, there, here, there, here, there. You're going to be able to really think about the shots and get the shot that you actually want instead of just taking a bunch of random shots that might not be nice in terms of composition. So another reason why I would uh, prefer a prime lens for a beginner is that it removes a factor. So when you're wanting to learn all of this kind of stuff, you're going to be bombarded with a lot of information. And the first few pieces of information are the most important, which are the way your camera works and the way your camera gets set. So the way your camera works is that, um, you know, your buttons and everything, you're going to have to calibrate that and get used to the actual handling of your camera. The other part is the way that your images get set. I'm mostly talking about the how you set your ISO and your aperture and your shutter speed. So when you have so many things to focus on, just cutting out the factor of having to think about, oh, how will I zoom um, back and forth? or how should I set my zoom to do a certain thing. If you're cutting that out and you know you're only shooting with a certain focal length, that is going to allow you to cut one more thing out and just focus on taking the photo itself. So my final reason on why you would get a prime lens is basically uh, your prime lens, as I said before, can open to a wider aperture, which will allow more background blur. So this is going to make your photos look more professional and more appealing to look at, if done correctly. And I'm a huge advocate for enjoying taking photos and the whole process of taking photos. When you start especially, I feel like it's really important to want to take photos. So when you go out and you find yourself taking really nice photos or photos that you know, you'll be impressed with as a beginner photographer, I feel like that would make you want to go out and take more photos. And that ends up as a cycle of going out and taking more photos, getting better, realizing you like your photos, then improving over time. And I feel like that's an important feeling to have as a photographer, especially when you're starting out, is to get photos that you are actually enjoying instead of photos that you feel like, uh, not really that nice, you know? I would recommend beginners start with a 35mm uh, focal length in the prime lens because this is what we see the closest in our own vision. 
Uh, however, if you have specific purposes like you're taking portraits or you're taking landscapes, then a 24mm or a 85 would work as well. So you might want to do more research on why you want to use each focal length. And if you would want an explanation on why we would want to use certain focal lengths, then you can leave it in the comments below and I may make a video about this in the future. Alright, so for the next item, uh, let me get it over here. So my next item is going to be a good camera bag. So the one that I'm using is the Peak Design 3 liter bag. However, it does not have to be a specific camera bag, but I would recommend a bag that is padded. So a bag is usually overlooked sometimes by some beginner photographers, but look at it this way. So if you're spending a lot on the camera itself, you don't want a cheap bag and you don't want to end up turning one day and then you're smashing it into a wall. I would recommend a padded bag at least. So this would allow your camera to be safe because you don't want to be spending so much on the camera itself only to spend on a cheap bag and then the camera breaks anyways. This bag is going to be your barrier against basically everything around you. Uh, the weather, if it's raining, then a waterproof bag would be really great. Especially if you live in a country where it rains a lot. And then this will help you against hard surfaces as I mentioned before. If you're going out and if you're going to be moving around a lot, especially if you're hiking and your bags are going to come into contact with rocks as you climb up certain places or if you put them down, it might be on hard surfaces and you might get excited sometimes and accidentally put the bag down too quickly. So this bag is going to be that barrier between your camera and the world. So in a similar vein to the camera bag, the next thing I'm going to talk about is something that I feel like you shouldn't cut corners on either, which is yeah, this an SD card or multiple SD cards. If you really need to shoot long events or if you want to go out and have a backup just in case. So I'm going to give you a hypothetical situation. In this situation, you go out to shoot and the lighting is really nice. You spend hours to hike up on a hill or, or you spend hours to go into the city and you get some really nice photos which the lighting is just perfect, everything is just perfect, the situation is perfect, your subject in the photo is perfect, you're previewing it on your camera and you're looking at it and you're really going like, oh, this is a nice photo, maybe the best I've ever taken. You go home and you plug your SD card into the laptop only to find out that it's been corrupted or there's been a problem with the file and it didn't write to the card correctly. Okay, so I admit that that might be a bit of a stretch in terms of it won't happen to everyone and to certain people it may not happen at all through their whole journey of photography. But trust me, as someone who has experienced something like that before, you don't want that to happen to you ever. So if you're just starting out and if you're a beginner, most likely you're going to be shooting only on one card and that's going to be the same for quite some time. So I would suggest spending an extra premium on the card as well. So I would suggest that you uh, spend on a good card and make sure that it's a reliable card from a reliable name brand and that will save you from tons of pain down the road. So the next item on my list is going to be an extra battery for your camera. So I would say that most entry-level to mid-range cameras don't really have good battery life. In fact, a lot of older cameras that are on the higher range don't have a good battery life as well. So having just one extra battery might be an essential in your kit because this extra battery in the similar situation as before, if you reach a really nice scene, the lighting is perfect and your subject is really popping out of the scene, you really want to take a photo then you see, oh, my camera is low on battery. So that's the last thing you want to see when you're in that situation. You don't want to spend all the effort to go on a shoot and then find the shot and you almost get the shot but then you find out that your battery is running low. So you can't really pose your subject properly and you just have to rush things. So this will ensure that you have plenty of time to properly compose all of your images as well as actually have time to not panic when you're taking those images as well. So my recommendation for all of this would be to not go with the original manufacturer's battery, but to get a third-party battery instead. So these batteries might be lower in capacity, but they are going to be way cheaper for you to get a few extra batteries or at least even one extra battery, and it's not going to hurt your wallet too much. This is one of those cases where you are going to be able to spend a little bit extra but to allow your camera to operate for a longer period of time. Finally, for the last item but I feel to be the most simple item that people tend to forget is a microfiber cloth. So no matter where you are, you are going to encounter either fingerprints on your lenses somehow, you are going to encounter rain or you are going to encounter dust. So these are the situations that you might see yourself in and something as simple as a cleaning cloth can help you a lot in those situations. I feel like as a photographer, you have to respect your tool, which is your camera, and really treat it fairly. You want to make sure that it's always clean and that you're actually taking care of your gear. Okay, when I'm talking about a cloth, I'm talking about a microfiber cloth. 
So you only want to use microfiber cloths on your items and on your gear because using a normal cloth might actually damage your camera in terms of like you might actually scratch it instead of clean it. And that would be the opposite effect that we want here. So yeah, remember to only use a microfiber cloth on your equipment. A microfiber cloth is something that is extremely cheap to get and sometimes it's even free in certain cases where you buy your camera and then they're going to give you a microfiber cloth and a brush in the kit as well. So it's something that I feel like not only every beginner should have but every intermediate photographer or professional photographer should have as well. There you have it, all of what I feel to be essential gears for photographers that they actually should be getting instead of the gears that they might not necessarily use. And after this, I want to make a disclaimer that no matter what gear that you use, it might be expensive gear or it might be cheap gear. I feel like the most important thing to taking good photos is the actual practice that you put into it and your actual experience as a photographer. So if you found this video useful and if you want to see other videos of me discussing other things, you can leave them in the comments below or you can subscribe and see what I post next.